Hi, as a part of understanding uh, Wi-Fi 7 MLO, uh, I thought it will be good to compare Wi-Fi 7 with a cellular feature which has similarity called as carrier aggregation. And so that's uh, what I will do in a brief manner. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So quick note, Wi-Fi 7 multi-link operations is defined to help us combine multiple links in various ways. Uh, sometimes uh, just switching between links, sometimes adding links depending on the various capabilities and scenarios. And of course, the initial products are likely to have radios tuned to this bands 2.45 and 6. However, we can expect uh, you know, some interesting product configurations with multiple radios here or here, and possibly even in the future, the extension to 60 gig and so on. Okay. And the drivers for MLO have been uh, the peak throughput numbers, uh, some of the load balancing, band steering, uh, challenges which Wi-Fi has to face for quite some time. What about carrier aggregation in cellular? In cellular, carrier aggregation happened during the 4G era, specifically LTE Advance was the trigger. And that was because of the limitation of the definition of LTE carrier bandwidths to 20 megahertz. And so to get higher peak data rates as envisaged in IMT Advanced, they had to look at alternative ways of getting a larger bandwidth. And that's where they brought in carrier aggregation initially as a target to get higher peak data rates through a variety of uh, intra-band as well as inter-band carrier aggregation schemes. But operators also found it very flexible for combining the spectrum assets. As you know, similar to how we have multiple bands in Wi-Fi, uh, cellular operations are also for an operator in, you know, uh, different parts of the world have different spectrum assets which they want to pull together and do interesting things with them whether it is combination to achieve higher data rates or to manage traffic etc okay now going one step further on the technical front on the cellular side the base station e node b as it's called in lte g node b in 5g is very powerful when it comes to dictating what the mobile should do because of the operations in the license band, etc. So one of the ways by which the carrier aggregation feature is controlled tightly is through this mechanism called RRC, radio resource control. Okay. So the, the base station to which the, the UE is connected to usually defines the various ways by which the carrier aggregation is configured for that particular UE. And of course, how it gets used in practice is also very important because in the case of a mobile unit like this, power consumption is a very, very serious challenge. And so that is also taken into account by the base station when it decides which carriers to use and which carriers to kind of uh, sleep on, etc., etc. But everything is orchestrated by the, the base station. So it's the all powerful entity which decides which carriers uh, get to be the primary carriers, which carriers get to be the secondary, how many secondary, when will they be active, and how to use them on downlink and uplink. All those things get managed by the, the base station, okay, through this RRC mechanism. And it has been very successful in practice. And so that means that this protocol has had some effect in practice in moving up various parameters. What about Wi-Fi 7 MLO? In Wi-Fi 7 MLO also, the multiple links uh, can be changed through processes like reassociation, uh, tearing down through dissociation. There are also mechanisms for mapping uh, traffic on certain links. Uh, there are also power save mechanisms which the client can use to move links. However, the major difference is here, it seems like just in the Wi-Fi world with everything else, AP and the client seem to have powers to manage those links. And so the 
question for us when it comes to this particular aspect of MLO is that uh, how well will they collaborate? And that's why I thought it was interesting to take the cellular example with carrier aggregation as being the closest equivalent to the MLO in Wi-Fi uh, because there it's very well orchestrated by the base stations. But in the case of Wi-Fi, uh, you might find that the AP thinking one way and the client thinking another way and we could have some interesting challenges. Hopefully, there will be more collaboration and cooperation rather than uh, anything which results in, say, not so great use of MLO. Okay. So that was a short introduction to the MLO from the perspective of uh, how control is established in a comparison with cellular. We'll come back with more on Wi-Fi 7 MLO. For more uh, videos, you can take a look at our website or courses. Uh, we also offer courses through Wi-Fi Now Academy. Uh, so see you soon.